Hi, we're Lydia and Vian, and in our last video, we spoke about all of the difficulties of buying and converting a van. And today, we're going to give you the full tour of our self-converted Mercedes Sprinter van. I'm going to be honest and say we regret not filming this sooner. So we have now been living in the van almost three months. And I feel like usually when I watch a van tour, it's before someone's moved in and it's nice and clean and everything's fresh and beautiful. We're currently at a packed campsite and there's been a lot of sand in our van. So we've given it a quick clean. We're going to give you a full tour, but at least this will give you really the honest look at van life because we've lived in it for three months. We can tell you what we love what we don't like, what we change. Let's go. first come into the van you will see this fly screen and honestly it's been a game changer I can't imagine living in this van without it yeah it's been amazing now, <laughs> you might be wondering where can I get one I actually bought these from Bunnings and on the packaging it says that the width is adjustable but the height isn't the height had to be adjusted to fit in this spot and it took me probably two three days yeah, and I had to re-engineer re the whole thing I changed the pulleys, like cut it to size. It was not easy. <laughs> a mammoth effort, but Vian being able to customize it was a game changer and we've loved it. So Lydia really wanted a full length mirror and you might be wondering, well, how can you fit a full length mirror in a van? The only way you can do it is probably behind a shower door or a sliding door. Yes. So I went for a sliding door, which there's that area. <laughs> and what having the sliding door, besides the benefit of a mirror, it also allows us to access the front. Yeah. If for some reason we need to access it in the night and drive off, it's just a safety thing, really. Yeah. That was a big priority for us. Big enough for me to fit through. Pretty <laughs> he just squeezes a little bit. Come through again to show. See, it's not too bad. Just a little duck. To be honest, like when we first did it, we thought that it would just be like a emergency kind of situation, like not really having worry about the size but i don't think we've ever gone through the slide no we use it all the, the time yeah it's, it's pretty it's comfortable to go so through. good but especially when you wake up at like 2 a.m for a hike <laughs> <laughs> yeah you don't want to get out and get bitten by mozzies but behind vian's seat here you can see we fit the recovery tracks on there's a lot of other things as well like yeah there's some chairs, other things like behind whatever. mine we've got the window shades We've got camping chairs. Yeah. We've really been able to fit a lot behind our seats. Yeah. And you'll see when we go in there later, we have an overhead cupboard, which is why there's a lower like head height here. Yeah. <laughs> Another thing I want to mention as well is that we had a two-seater bench in the front. Oh yeah. So it was actually that. a three-seater before. <laughs> I won't go into too much detail, but if it's a factory option, you don't have to get the seats engineered. So, I got a seat from a previous generation Sprinter, because that's the only thing I could find, for about 500 bucks. And I had to put resistors in to trick the system into thinking that there's a third seat. Because if you have a three-seater, there will be an airbag in the middle seat. So I had to trick the system into thinking that the airbag was still there when it's not. And, yeah. It's completely legal now. <laughs> We've taken it over the pits. Yeah, I guess say so, that we did actually get it approved yeah. and registered as yeah. a two-seater from a three-seater. So, yeah. good job, Vian. Legend. It's ridiculous how many cup holders are so in this many. Like, there's literally one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then there's like bottle there's holders on the, the side sides. as well. Yeah, we put our bottles down here, which is a really great storage spot for them when we're driving. But um, yeah, we got book from my dad. We've got all of our rego papers, just some extra things here. Because when you have a converted van, you need to bring your papers with. Yes. Because we don't have a mod plate or anything. So that's literally- Our papers. Yeah, that's <laughs> our papers to say that this is completely legal. Coming back out from the cargo area, you'll see we have this overhead storage area. 
Now this is another game changer. It has so much space in here and you won't be able to you tell. You seriously won't be able to tell. Like it it's goes, so big. It literally goes the entire way over the um, front, what do you call it? The front driving area? Yeah, yeah. What we've got in here, which you can't see, but it's massive. We have both of our hiking bags, like huge, big hiking bags. We have all of our collapsible range, like our laundry stuff, our bucket, our dish thing. We've got laundry stuff like peg basket. We've got extra toilet paper. We've got extra like composting blocks for our toilet. We've got bags. We have some clothes in here. One thing I also want to mention is you might think that's crooked. You would be completely <laughs> right. I'm so glad that I used concealed hinges because obviously with like moving things like a van, you will have like some settlement and we've driven on a lot of concealed roads. So corrugated roads. Oh yeah. Corrugated <laughs> roads, not concealed. Oh both. Both. <laughs> <laughs> um so I just need to go through and readjust all the cabinet fronts um to line them up perfectly. But yeah. More important things to do than uh adjust your cabinet fronts. Exactly. Once we've come out of this big storage area, we've got like, this is what we call the pantry. I don't know why we call it that, but we do. Yeah, it's it's little... nothing like a pantry <laughs> at all. <laughs> it's extra work top if we need, but we don't yeah. really use this often. No, Maybe really. we'll have like batteries charging up here or whatever, but it's our pantry area. So we have um, all the manuals for anything that's in our van. Yeah. We have our hiking boots. We have our trainers. We have med, like med stuff, sunscreen, bug zappers, like all <laughs> miscellaneous health kind of things. And then right at the bottom, we have an off-road first aid kit and a torch. Yeah. Which yeah. fingers crossed- And cross, a fire blanket. Which fingers crossed we never have to use the first aid kit or the fire blanket, but um, good to have just in case. Yeah. We should probably say as well, as you walk in, the fire extinguisher is right there. Now, where the fire extinguisher is traumatizes Vian because it ruins <laughs> the whole aesthetic for him. Yeah. But that is where it needed to be for us to pass the inspection to get this registered as a motorhome. Yeah. Needed to be easy to access, um, not in a cupboard, easily visible, near a door, etc. etc. We have got a little bit of decor, so we've got these little plants <laughs> in this little niche area. Yeah. They're stuck on with Velcro, so they have never fallen. I love them. They are. They're so cute. They're forever. They're cute. We wanted to add like a painting or a picture here, but we kind of just like moved in and didn't get to do all the homely stuff. And we're <laughs> like, oh, now we're traveling. We're, we're on the road care. now. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those things. We've also got a little area that has like little books. A journal in there. and whatever. I have not been writing in that. I told uh, myself I would, but I haven't been. Then we get to our shower. Now we were debating going with a shower screen, but we went with a solid door just because we like the aesthetic of it a little bit more. And also, the shower screens are ridiculously oh, yes. expensive. Super expensive. And hard to get in Australia. Like you yeah. can't get the Nautilus one in Australia. It's so, like a glide away or something it's called. Yeah. And so it's not as good as the Nautilus one. So we end up just going with a door and we do love the way it looks. So if yeah. you come on in, we've got our first thing you're looking at <laughs> is the shower niche. Yeah. Now again, these bottles are Velcroed in, so they have not moved. <laughs> Now, I was so scared. Like, anytime we're driving and heard a bang, I was like, that's it. The bottles are gone. Like, it's <laughs> happened. But they have stayed rigid this entire time. So, fingers crossed it stays like that the whole lap. They're also really big bottles. So, they hold, I think it was like one and a half liters. One and a half liters. I think it was. Now, we haven't had to refill those yet. <laughs> now, I don't know if that's a sign of the bottles being really big and great or us not showering enough. It could be the latter. I mean, as long as you guys won't be able to tell. Then, yeah, you guys uh, can't tell how smelly we are. <laughs> and the second thing you may notice in the shower area is the toilet. And I promise I'm not pooping right now. <laughs> so what we have is a nature's head toilet. So in the front section is where the pee goes. And then the back. It goes into a bottle. And it goes there. into this little bottle, which we replace probably, not replace, um, empty every couple of days. Yeah, about that. And then the back is where the poo poo goes. Which we're not gonna open because we've been pooping. Exactly. <laughs> um, and that, I, I feel like a lot of people say that they do that, change that like once a month. But I feel like it's more realistically about two, three, two to weekly. three weeks. 
Maybe um, we just poop a lot. Maybe. Anyway. <laughs> so the toilet does have a vent. You can see it's pulling in air there yeah. and it comes out this side. Which... So it doesn't smell. No, it doesn't. At all. Which we've loved the toilet. It's been great. It is. There is a toilet roll holder. Now we have to remember to take the <laughs> toilet paper out before it's only we shower. It's once where we've forgotten to take this toilet paper Only roll once. Only we once. learn after so, that. So, <laughs> yeah. So then we've got the shower. Which I did not take my time to untwist this pipe and I know I can fix it in a couple of minutes but <laughs> <laughs> I really 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 love this Karoma Luna yeah, shower it's headset. really nice. It's actually not that much more expensive than like your regular ones and I do also have to say a lot of people might question the water flow um, and say oh well like you know like what's the water pressure like because there's a lot of like shower heads for caravan specifics um, we have a big water pump that has a, like an extreme flow rate purely because of our water uh, filtration system, but we'll get, get into that later. So it's not an issue at all with this shower head. Um, but it's height adjustable on this rail and it's beautiful. We love it. <laughs> you can also change the setting as well oh, yeah, so, so it'll like have different um, flow. Yeah. You may notice these little stickers. And that's purely because I wanted everything to be serviceable and accessible. So this whole section here is actually like one panel that I made that is actually removable just in case we needed to like um, access, the plumbing. access the plumbing for the shower. <laughs> now the coffee machine, which was a hot topic of debate for us because this came from our house. And I do also have to say, if you watched our previous video, you would have seen in the renderings that I did for the design of the van. You would have seen the coffee machine. And that's because I was dead set that we're taking the coffee machine with us. We had this in our house. It's been trusty. We've had it probably for like three years yeah, now. Yeah, I wasn't so sure. I just thought it would take up a lot of space and would be messy. But I'm so glad we bought it, honestly. So yeah, I guess we should show that that's actually quite a deep section. Yeah, so we can, I can use even the move space this over if we want. A worktop once again. To show you how deep it is as well. We've made a little drawer. Yes. <laughs> well, we didn't make it to show you how deep it was, but we have a little drawer here, which pretty much goes like 80% of the way where we have utensils, utensils, utensils. <laughs> <laughs> and Vian all built this custom to what we wanted in here. So we've yeah. got like Alpha. He's put these little like dividers in. These are custom built into the drawer just so we had everything we wanted in here and it would fit perfectly. We have a Bushman's DC-130X, I believe it is. Um, so that means it's a 130 litre fridge, which has been plenty for us. Yeah, it's been um, really good. We can fit a lot in there. And it's a pretty efficient fridge as well. Every single cabinet was built with a purpose. This one... <laughs> it's a mess right it's now. It's a mess <laughs> right now, and we don't have the towels here, but normally we have towels here. Yes, we usually have beach towels and face towels up there, yeah. and a squeegee for the shower. Yeah. And then the bottom section, we have coffee beans, cereals, coffee mugs, sugars, flowers. Staples. We turned some more of the lights on so it may look a little different. But coming off from this coffee nook area, I guess I'll go through the overhead cabinets first. We've got this little niche decorative area <laughs> just to break up all the white and add some more plants. Again, they're velcroed in, so they stay there. Then we've got our first overhead cabinet, which is all our like toiletries. And it's got all our toothbrushes, our face wash, our toilet spray, uh. earbuds, like Listerine, everything in there. And next one, we've got more kind of beauty stuff. I've got a waxing kit because we're at the beach all the time. I needed my waxing kit. <laughs> we've got a waxing kit, we got shavers, hair dryer, which I have not used at all. Get a microfiber hair wrap thing. It's been a game changer. I'll link whatever it is on the video. <laughs> I never dry my hair with a hair dryer. So. Teeth whitening kits, things like that. Then we've got the first lot of the clothes. So this one is my clothes. Yep. It's mostly like tops and like I've got some dresses in there and everything. Lydia has two sections for clothes. We have the same mat sections. No, no, no. I oh, I, just you wait. I, I just take up wait. like 10% of one of them. Wait for this. You ready? So yeah. this is mine, shirts, dresses, things like that. Yeah. This one is underwear, bathers, sports bras, bras, things like that. Yep. Um, and again, we shared this section. 
This section's mine. And the back one is mine. The we, back one is Vian's. <laughs> Lydia will it have looks, to get onto it. It looks the same as Exactly mine. the same. <laughs> and I then we've think. got this one, which is miscellaneous. It's your pants. Only my one pants. bag. Only one bag my is for my pants. He's got one bag here. But it's still a bag that takes up space, okay? 10%. And I guess we should add that we've used packing cubes for all of these. It's really just helped us keep the space organized and keep them like categorized as well. Like I'll be like, okay, this is dresses, this is short sleeve shirts. It just keeps it nice and tiny. I guess I'll continue for the rest of the overheads. So this is now like the kitchen sort of overheads. So this one is like spreads oils, um, we got pills, protein powders, things like that. And then the final overhead is Whoa. snacks, and it's a mess. Pancake mix. <laughs> Whoa. We've got chips, we've got <laughs> pancake mixes, we got snacks. It's kind of a bit of a mess. There is a little lip oh, on yeah. every single one of the overheads, just so when something comes running forward, it doesn't open the door. This is the, These doors are literally just held in by the strut and by gravity. Like it's, they're not moving at they're all. They're amazing. We have no issues with this at all. They always stay in place. Next is probably one of the biggest showcases in how overly designed and thought out this whole build is. And that is the spice drawer. These are all designed to fit perfectly in here. <laughs> with a little bit of room in the back for another row. Yes, if we need. If we need, so... if we expand our, uh, Spice. recipes our we spices we literally went through all of our recipes and we were like all right what spices do we use how many spice jars are we gonna need and Vian made sure it fit in here so Perfectly. very grateful for that i love <laughs> having these and underneath that is it is our dishes Which... now what you don't see right now is usually we have our towels in here but we've currently got them out on the washing line but usually we have our kitchen towels just either side of all of these we've got four of them just so that when we're driving, they're not like flying about, but we haven't had any issues with them at all. Oh! <laughs> Another exciting bit. Another exciting bit. It took me forever to find a bin that was perfectly sized. The bin. But look at that. Open her up. Now, it's, I will say it's currently full because we've been off grid at a campsite for a week now, so we are due a bin empty. Right at the back, you can see a little storage area. That see. is the like little to kick area. You know, we pull it out, we empty the bin, and, and then, then we, we just, just grab, grab a new the bag. bags from back there. It's a nice place to store them. Exactly. <laughs> and they're on soft, soft clothes. Yes, they're on soft clothes. So, so they and they don't open. The bin and not think about it. All right. So in our next section, what we've got at the top of, is we've got like jars and sauces and things. This shelf is also removable, as you can see here just in case we wanted to fit something bigger Big, in, yeah. in our pantry. And it's the same for this one. Yeah, but. so we've got that as removable if we need, but we like having it with this divide. The bottom section, well, the middle section, <laughs> we've then got pastas, Pastels. rices, dried fruits, sesame seeds, chia seeds, things like that. They're all in their own nice little containers down there. And also fit perfectly. <laughs> yes, <laughs> they fit perfectly. You can see that we have two kicks here. So, that's purely for your toes when you're working at the kitchen so that you're nice and ergonomic, whatever. Um, <laughs> but I didn't want to waste that space. And also, um, if you can see, we have an air fryer in here slash oven and that would not have fit in here unless we made these sections smaller. So I just went in, instead of having the toe kick and then like a, a board over it, it's just a dip, like a right angle with wood. So, so that extra air fryer space. Fits perfectly. And we've also got like cutting boards and, and things like that. There yeah, and as cork well. mats. So, just next to that is our next kitchen cupboard. And it's a bit of a mess in here at the moment, but it's all like our metal bowls, our saucepan, our pans, our wok. We've randomly got some sugar in there too at the moment, which <laughs> shouldn't be in there, but it is. Measuring cups, and again, removable shelf if we need. Yep. And right at the bottom, we've got our two induction cooktops. We've got Some like nachos. Nachos yeah. in there. <laughs> we've got um, a sieve. We've got a slow cooker. We've got um, what are those measuring scales? Yeah. Um, there's quite a lot down there. You also will see this little vent. Which yeah. we'll explain later. Which we'll explain later. So this is a boring one. It's cleaning. <laughs> 
so we've got all the cleaning items here obviously the sink as well taking up some of that space yeah and then at the bottom the kitchen oh, hey, aid the kitchen aid perfectly now we use the kitchen aid quite a bit for making doughs and cooking things from scratch behind it there is the wheel well which Jan <laughs> is showing yeah oh. it no, I'm be able to perfect. yeah like that thing is not moving which if you have a kitchen aid you know how heavy it is, so <laughs> it's yeah. good to not have it moving. While we're in here, I'll just explain a little bit of the utility control panels. Um, so we have water pump switch here, then we have an aircon remote here, and then we have the water heater control panel here, and then we have the little max air fan remote so we can just turn it on here's the where the exhaust fan is you may have noticed it earlier it's by the coffee nook section it is filthy it always gets real it filthy gets like so, so quickly. dirty so quickly so we have to clean this thing constantly but we love it like yeah. for ventilation it's, getting airflow in the van it's been amazing it's unreal actually like when we had the little teaser but when we have the uh, <laughs> skylight open and like literally you just turn this on like very very low you can feel the air like really like coming yeah through. it's amazing so love that but it's filthy all the time and you may have noticed above the shower area there's a little gap there oh, yeah. that's because it also exhausts out For all ventilation. the yeah and also when we cook with induction cooktops yeah and it also comes with a little remote so uh, when we're lazing in the bed we can just grab the remote turn it on or turn it off so usually it's pretty noisy turning it on <laughs> but that's because it's like pushing a little rain hood up you might be thinking rain hood well that's because you can have it running while it's raining it's yeah, got like a little cover so on good. it with like a little vent so it's actually bringing air up underneath that hood so yeah so you can literally have ventilation even on rainy days which Beautiful. Alright, so putting away the exhaust fan remote, what else do we have in here that we need to talk about? So we have, I love Truma, they have a beautiful reverse cycle or ducted air conditioner, which we have. Um, it actually runs pretty efficiently. When you have it running on like a 35 to 40 degree Celsius day, and you have the temperature set about 21 degrees Celsius, it probably pulls about 800 watts, 700 watts, which yeah. is it's pretty good. So we have a diesel heater, it's a Truma D6. So not only does that heat the space, like with the vents. Again, vented. <laughs> yeah, it also heats our water. Um, so one of the things that I really wanted to do in the van build was simplify it while keeping like the luxuries. So I didn't want to have a gas bottle and having to worry about filling up the gas or having to get a plumber to legally do it. If you have a diesel heater, you can just plumb it yourself and that's it. You don't need any certification from a qualified person. I opted to drop the diesel tank, <laughs> which was a pain in the butt for the sprinter. Um, and then put my own fuel line in and then had that go to the diesel heater. And it's been worth it. It makes the water so hot. Yeah, like <laughs> instantly, well, not instantly, but like 10, 15 minutes, the water is boiling hot. I mean, currently we haven't used it that much because we're in peak of summer at the moment. So we've been enjoying the cold showers, but the times we have had hot showers have been really nice. It's also designed to continuously run, um, but we, we don't didn't. really shower that often, so... <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're calling there's, us out! There's no point in having it run continuously for us, at least. We just turn it on like 30 minutes before we know we're going to use it. But I'm sure when we go into like snowy regions like Tasmania, we will use the space heater continuously, so we might as well have the water running as well. Which, also, I do have to say, if you have it running continuously, it doesn't use that much diesel. I think it's like 100 milliliters per hour, so... I mean, the whole day for two liters, Not if that. Bad. Well, that's also, it only runs continuously for four hours a day to keep the water tank full if you're not using it. So between 500 and two liters of diesel a day, which, yeah, that's pretty, pretty cheap. <laughs> They're both Truma products and you can buy a little computer and they can talk to each other and you can set a temperature. I have temperature probes throughout the van. Um, you can set a temperature and they will work together, but like I like control, so I just control myself. 
Um, but you will notice the same looking vents, and that's because that's that's why they're both Trimo products. Um, so we have a aircon vent here, diesel heater vent here, and then down here we have a diesel heater vent as well, which you can't really which see. Which you can't tell. <laughs> so I really try to keep all the heater vents low down because obviously hot air rises, and then all the aircon vents. I ideally would have put one here, like blowing onto that window, because if you don't know, when on hot days, it's not the air or whatever or light that makes the van hot or whatever hot. It's actually just the windows baking in the sun. So if you cool down the windows, the van will be cooled. So yes. that's why we didn't have like an overhead aircon because yes, it will keep the van cool while you run the aircon, but not when the aircon's off. Like it'll instantly go hot. Whereas if you cool the windows and they're really cool and they'll stay cool for a little while, when you turn the aircon off, it'll still stay cold. It's more effective, more efficient. Yeah, so we've got the heater, <laughs> AC heater down there. And then another heater here. Another heater down there. Then air aircon here. Aircon here. We've got an aircon at the back, which maybe we'll yeah, show when we properly get back there. <laughs> yeah. We haven't shown the sink. Oh, the <laughs> sink. <laughs> All right. So. I'm just going to point out, what? this is really how well designed it was. Like it's right up to the edge of this cabinet here. <laughs> so we've got the sink, which we've got this cover for it. Um, hide your dishes, but also if you want more cutting, uh, like counter space, which yeah. we haven't actually used recently, yeah. but we always <laughs> keep it covered because it looks a bit tidier. We can pull that up, open it out, and there's our sink. The sink itself is an IKEA sink. It's actually really impressive. It's I think like some sort of I'll, I'll, I'll double check what it's made out of, but they're notorious for scratching. Um, so we were actually looking at sinks that were like double or triple the price But then we opted for the IKEA one because it's perfectly sized and I was like 200 bucks or something like it's yeah, actually it was really cheap. It was and actually ridiculous I'm pretty cheap. sure we'll double check this but they have like a 30-year warranty on it or something yeah. like that where it's meant to be scratch resistant If it scratches you're covered under warranty so much cheaper than all the other sinks out there and, and it's, it's been, been perfect. Then we've got the Coroma again for the tap, which we like. Yeah. It's good. It's same, same, same as the shower. Also, I guess we should say we have electrical outlets. Oh, yes. <laughs> we have plugs everywhere. So we've got plugs here, plugs uh, behind the coffee machine, <laughs> plug, down, plug there. down there. So we've got plugs everywhere as well. But now for the seating area. I guess you guys would know that in our last video, we said that one thing that was really important to us was a comfy bed. So we wanted a bed that wasn't convertible, but we still wanted a seating area to be able to sit, eat, have dinner, work on our laptops, whatever. And this is what we've done here. And we love this area. So we've got these little seats and we have a little, right next to the window. <laughs> it's elevated at my feet, um, yeah. but it's a great spot to work. Vian set it up. So it was like perfect height for our laptops and everything. Got a little bit of headroom as well. So we're not too close there. Also the AC vent, so if it's really hot, <laughs> we're working at the desk and we've got the AC blasting, which is nice. We've also got, what are these called? Cigarette charger sockets, whatever. Yes, we've got <laughs> cigarette charger socket things here as well. So we can charge our laptops, our phones, which, everything just from that. So the amount of times that I've seen people with vans and let's say MacBooks or something that is compatible with like a USB-C type charger or just a normal charger, turn the inverter on and then plug their MacBook charger into the wall is like, honestly, it's ridiculous. These chargers are fantastic. They're actually approved and certified by Apple. They're SciTechy or however you pronounce that. And it's a 72 watt charger, which it's 12 watt, uh, watts in the normal charger and then 60 watts in the other one. 
it charges a MacBook Pro pretty quickly, and even a MacBook yeah, Air so as well. Quickly. It's it's honestly I, a game changer, and we don't have the have the inverter on. You may see we've also got this little window area, which little that's a huge big. window. <laughs> A big window area which Vian has framed out and it just looks so beautiful like I love this when you're at your desk working and it's like it's just beautiful anyway but Vian throughout the whole van the main door the back doors and this door has built in blinds which he is an absolute legend there was this. such a pain it was a pain but so worth it it is so nice just being able to pull the blind down and once again they also do cool down the windows like it is it, yeah. it doesn't get hot with the blinds down yes really nice and i feel like it matches as well like having the gray yeah with the gray the with the gray with the gray <laughs> <laughs> hey we were planning on putting some personality into the van but uh we were just way yeah. too eager to start traveling so that's one thing you'll notice is we've gone with very white for the van and i know a lot of people do that but it keeps it very neutral keeps it bright makes it feel bigger and we wanted to oomph it up with color in like decor and extra things like that now we have barely decorated our van and added that homely touch because when we finished our van and got it approved i was like we're the type of people who could spend forever on this <laughs> let's just go and travel yeah and now that we're traveling i'm like i don't really care about those things i kind of just love the van how it is so eventually we'll add homely things but for now it's um great so now with the cushions we grabbed ikea outdoor shout out ikea cushions. <laughs> and then my mom's friend ali actually custom cut these for us for a bottle of wine in exchange what a legend um so she cut these and they are perfect we love them they are great so underneath we actually have storage area in the chair yeah so this one's just for like towels and spare blankets towels, and blankets whatever now the other section i'm gonna be very embarrassed to show because <laughs> it's our laundry bin which we've been at this campsite <laughs> for a week now and, we and haven't done any laundry because look at that view yeah why and would you i should say as well this isn't just a week of laundry like we've been wearing things a lot we have not done laundry in ages our fault i'm embarrassed but this is our laundry bin basically I also just wanted to say with the cushions, um, there's actually a lot of benefits with it being from Ikea because we were able to select different cushion yes. inserts. So we have like a harder so quite firm, so you on the can bottom. sit on it and have it quite a firm. And then we've got like a really soft kind of back section. But not That's only great. that, they're actually outdoor cushions as well. So they're like yes, somewhat, somewhat waterproof and like you can clean yeah. them so easily. Yeah, we can but literally just remove the cover and give them a wash if we need. Not only that, do you know how expensive getting custom <gasps> cushions made yes. are? Yes! We looked into getting custom cushions made and they were so expensive. So next is the bed section. We have a little step to get onto the bed. Purely because Lydia has little legs. Hey. Um, but yeah, so you can step, step on that on, to climb in. Which I can't lie on it because of these blind pillows. Yeah, so I'll we move usually move over. the decorative <laughs> pillows when we go to bed. But I, so, can, I can lie down pretty comfortably yeah. and sleep. So Vian is a side and angle yeah. sleeper. So he has a slight bend and he can fit fully in there. I can lay down fully. Yeah, which I'm... We should put our heights on the I, screen. I, I think I'm like 186, 187. This is more comfortable bed than the bed that we had in our house. So. Yeah, we love it. <laughs> we brought the mattress from, was it Macon Mattresses? Yeah, you can see it's a pretty thick mattress and it's made, it's actually a normal mattress that they just make to size. Yeah, so um, we got that custom made, pretty cheap actually, and yeah. it's so comfy, we love it. Yes, it's actually a double size, and I believe it's eight centimeters shorter than a normal double size mattress. So it's pretty big, and yeah. like, when I wake up in the morning, Vian's like, like the opposite side, and I'm on the opposite side, there's still yeah. a lot of room for oh, it. for sure. Us. And we, we were pretty comfortable with sleeping on a double, because we slept on a double bed when we were building the van. 
at Lydia's mom's house. Yes. Shout out. <laughs> <laughs> also, I guess we should say that we didn't put overhead cabinets over the side where yeah. our head is. Yeah, to make it feel more <laughs> spacious. Because what we do as well is sometimes if we want to sit separately or if we don't <laughs> want to sit on this area and want to be lazy, we actually sit and work on the bed and you can sit fully upright yeah. there like, and comfortably work. Still even here for my head. So while we're in the bed area, I might as well show you guys everything in the bed area. So we have a little fan there, which is okay. Sirocco Elite to whatever. The ladder on the screen. Yeah, <laughs> it's the fan that literally everyone uses, but we don't only have one. We have another, we have one. another one right here. It's dirty. <laughs> it's dirty, but they always are. They get dirty. It's another thing that we have to clean periodically. In the design, oh, I, wanted, I, I wanted a little space for Lydia's phone. Um, to charge and also there's like a little light switch here um, but she can just plug the charger in there her so phone goes I can plug put my phone on here every night so and it's nice and close to us and it gets charged to match the aesthetic I put a little fake cabinet front <laughs> with the same size border around the edge and then on my side excuse the blanket but I put my phone here and it charges on that port there which will show better from the garage area. Yeah. And here was the aircon vent and the aircon thing. <laughs> and onto the skylight. It's a Dometic. I think it's a meaty. We wanted to go with a bigger skylight, but this is the biggest one we could fit in between the, the structural beams that go across the top of the van without having to move those and then get that re-engineered by an improved engineer from the D Department of Transport. And as well, I think they're the, it's the perfect size. Like, I don't feel like we need more. Yeah. It brings a ton of light into the van and it leaves room for the overhead cabinets. True. It's got lights on there, like little blue lights, normal lights. It's got a blackout blind and then also a flight screen. Um, and it's also, you're able to open it and lock it into place. Not only did Lydia pester me with uh, getting the van done, there's also <laughs> little things that she got me to redo multiple times. <laughs> well, okay, for good reason. For good with reason. With this thing, I pointed it out to Vian, and I was like, Vian, I think that could be better. And then after he did it, he's like, you're right. What Vian's showing is really just the framing <laughs> around the edges. And I can't remember what we did previously. It was like a really skinny wood okay, or it, something. It, it was quite baggy. It was like a flexible plywood that I used before. Yeah, <laughs> but now it's removable and it's nice. It yeah. frames it out. It makes it look a little more finished. So I actually just put two nuts in. Oh, not two nuts, two bolts, because there was already rib nuts in there and literally this one and this one you undo them and this whole thing just pops out yeah um so the, the whole area is still serviceable if we need to do something with the wiring in the van or whatever over here we have a servo touch gx and that's connected to our servo gx um so pretty much what this does is it's a touch screen where we can manage and check our tank level sensors for example so it shows our fresh our waste our battery status, the DC power that we're using, our solar charger, what it puts in, uh, as well as our AC loads. And we can literally control anything and everything in the whole system through this display. Like, uh, for example, let's turn the inverter on. You can turn the inverter or the charger on. Um, it's really good. Honestly, you can't say anything bad about the, the Victron system. It's really amazing you may have noticed our battery's a little bit low that's because we're at a very beautiful campsite but we are under trees <laughs> yeah so we decided to just stay under the trees and appreciate the scenery rather than worry about keeping the batteries topped up so we do actually have two dc to dc chargers and that's because the alternator in this sprinter is quite capable i think it's a 220 amp alternator but I also didn't want to con constantly hammer the alternator because I know that's bad for it. So instead of using fuses, I opted to use two circuit breakers. So we can independently control whether we wanted them on or off. And I put that under Lydia's seat, the passenger seat, so that she can turn it on and off when we need. It's like part of our routine. We <laughs> hop in the car We're and like, yeah, like, all right, DC, DC charges, and I can just lean down and get them. <laughs> Before I open the door, eight, might look like a mess. It is a mess. But I promise <laughs> it's an organized mess. <laughs> yes, it is. 
All right. Um, I guess I should turn this as well. The back door is Oh, yeah, we framed those out also. Framed out. It's got scratches on it, but that's it wipes off with beach, beach wipes. And they also have lines in the back. We put a lot of utilities in the back of the van, which really opened throughout the van. So we've got loads of storage space actually in the van. So this area has really become things we don't need to access often. Now we can access these from lifting up the mattress and moving the bed slats, but the best way is coming to the garage. So we've got the suitcases and this gray storage container, which I'll go through later. We've got inflatable kayak, our charging cable, our hose, laundry line, air compressor, tools, spare water and one thing i wanted to share with these suitcases and the gray storage container we've stored like long life foods backup water things that we might need when we're off grid and remote but one way we manage that and know exactly what we have in there <laughs> it's probably a bit crazy but in my notes section we have fully listed what is in every single one of these so basically we can be in the van and I'll go, Vian, we're out of spaghetti. And what I'll do is I'll open up the notes, search in the note for spaghetti. So here I can see that we have three packs of spaghetti and it's in suitcase number one. Which probably makes us seem crazy, but it's a really good way to know what's in the back without having to come and look. We'll pull everything out to show you what's behind in the garage. <laughs> Only really when you pull everything out that you realize <laughs> how much space is in there. Yeah, it's truly amazing. You also have to say, with all that storage and whatever banging about, it does come with scratches, but it's only surface scratches and it's so easy to fix, so. But we never really look exactly. <laughs> at it, so it's not a big As problem. much as it traumatizes me. <laughs> um, before you show the back of the garage bit, we should show oh, this yeah. as well. Yeah, so it's actually also shiplap and it lines up with the rest of the ship back. And also, here is one of the other aircon vents, as well as the IR uh, receiver for the aircon. Here is the diesel heater. It's got an exhaust and also an intake that goes to the outside of the van. Um, that just ensures that no fumes or anything obviously come into the main area of the van. And also fresh air for the uh, motor that runs in there. Um, then we have a, another vent here, just to keep this area warm as well. Let's say we go in a snowy area, um, which I'll get to with the batteries in a second. But batteries don't like being cold, so then we can control the temperatures of the battery as well. Um, under here, well under here we have a lot of ducting and whatever for the aircon as well as the uh, heater, as you can see, <laughs> and a lot of pipes. And then down here is our reverse cycle ducted air conditioner, which I, I cannot say enough at how amazing it is. And we put a nice cover over that. It still gives it some ventilation, yeah. but it allows us to keep that as usable space. So we can still put yeah. things on top of that, exactly. which has been great. So we put like lighter things like our kayak seats and like paddles and, and like snorkel. snorkel. Like lots of life jackets, everything goes on top of it. So probably the more exciting part for a lot of people. For you. <laughs> Before I get into it, I just wanted to say that in today's like terms of prices and what is available, I probably would have gone for something a little different purely because we, when we bought everything for the setup for the electrical system, Victron prices were 40% lower than the iPhone. So this whole system probably would cost about $20,000 and it probably cost about 10,000, which is still a lot but in terms of what we're getting out of it and the quality and the reliability as well as longevity of all these components. I think also we should note that we don't have any gas in our build. Oh, so really well. it's all electrical for cooking and everything as well. So yeah. having this more full Robust on setup has been airborne. good for us. <laughs> yeah, it has. And like you've seen before, we're at like 20 something percent because we were under a tree for a whole. And haven't driven, week. but we can go completely <laughs> off grid for long periods of time, which we have done. Let's get started. <laughs> so uh, when we open this door, our inlet for the charger for the inverter is through the floor. And while this inverter can do a 32 amp inlet, I only opted to use a 15 amp inlet because no caravan park in Australia is going to have anything more than 15 amps. So what's the point in spending 
$300 for an inlet when I can spend $20 for an inlet um, and just get the same result. Um, so we have a 3000 volt amp um, inverter, which peak usage for an hour can go up to 5.5 kilowatts, if any of you are interested. <laughs> but not only that, if it's connected to the inlet, it has something called power assist. And what that means is, when it's plugged in, you can have literally the 15 amps or the 32 amps, depending on how much you use, plus the 5.5 kilowatts for, I think like an hour, an hour and a half running. So we could probably have nine kilowatts running through our whole AC circuit, which is really impressive. Next up is the little computer. Um, it's just a Servo GX. You don't need one, but once again, when I bought all this stuff, it was a pretty cheap solution for like our water tank level sensors and also being able to turn this on and off and also manage and look at the stats of the electrical system. We also do have a master isolator for the batteries. It's, it wasn't necessary because the battery monitoring system we have, I can't show it because it's behind this panel. <laughs> um, it is a Smart BMX, the, the Victron Smart BMX, and that actually has a built-in 400 amp uh, commutator. Um, so you can turn it off and on and isolate everything in using the app or the display in there. But I wanted to have one just because, you know, safety, I can just go, whoop, done. Like it's, it's a lot simpler to look at this and go, oh yeah, off switch if someone's not familiar with the setup. Under here, we have two 200 amp hour Victron smart batteries. I will just say this again. <laughs> These batteries are amazing, but I probably would not go for these batteries, but depending on what other batteries you can get in the market at, at the time that you build, um, purely because they're so expensive now. I think one of these batteries was $2,400. And now I'm looking at prices and they're like 3,800. It's so much more expensive. Um, but the really, really, really amazing thing about them is that they have built-in cell balancing. They have like all these little safety precautions. They have built-in temperature sensing. One of the greatest part about them is that they have a huge, huge, huge constant um, power drawer capability. So what that means, they can literally pull close to 400 amps of continuous load for like an hour. So we can actually use the 5.5 kilowatts safely, which with the cheaper batteries, sure you can have the inverter pull three kilowatts or four kilowatts but it's not entirely safe to do it constantly and as well like batteries are expensive so you don't want to hammer them and these batteries are built to be hammered <laughs> they're honestly just amazing i won't bore you guys too much with uh, the complete explanation of the electrical setup um, I'll just run through the basics. So we have two DC to DC chargers. They're the Orion TR Smart, isolated. Had I done this again, I would have gotten the non-isolated ones, purely because, you know, don't need the earth to the, the van chassis um, in, in the van, in this van in particular. But there were none available, so I went for the non-isolated ones and just ran the extra ground cable. Um, what that means is we can get pretty much, when I do have it running, it's like 900, between 800 and 900 watts charging just from the alternator of the van. And it, it does it fine. The van battery's happy, the van is happy. And I've checked with Mercedes and they said it's all good. <laughs> and then we have a MPPT charger. And it's a 150, 35 solar charger. And it's also a Victron one. What that means is that we can have our, I think, 450 watt solar panel. We went with mono panels, purely because they would perform better in most scenarios in campsites um, compared to poly. Typically, in ideal conditions, we don't really need to use the DC to DC chargers. We are fine just running off with solar in most cases. It's only like a rarity that we need to use the DC to DC chargers. Happy with the solar. Then another like amazing, amazing component that 
I think more people should use in their builds is the uh, Victron Lynx distributor. And what that is, it's pretty much a, a positive and a negative bus bar, as well as like a fuse holder. But not only that, with our smart BMS, tell us if a fuse has blown and it can tell us like pretty much anything we need to know. And you will not be able to, well, it'll be very difficult to be able to have a positive bus bar, a negative bus bar, as well as however many fuse holders you need for, for instance, for us, um, for the same price as a Lynx distributor. Another really, really good component that I think more people should use is a Victron Smart Battery Protect. Um, so pretty much what this little thing does is between, well, you can use it anywhere, but on the positive line from the battery or whatever bus bar to your DC box, literally anything, there's a, you put a little component in and what you can do with that one is you can control it through the Bluetooth and that will monitor the voltage of the battery and you can set pr different parameters on this snap smart battery protect just like any other component of this whole system where you can set okay cool if my voltage drops below 12.4 volts just disconnect this whole circuit so that would just turn off the whole ec fuse box section as well as the ac section it's really good for protecting your batteries so let's say you leave your van for like two months, for example, or a week or something, and you're not getting that much solar, and your fridge is constantly running, and you have your exhaust fans running. If you don't want to kill your batteries, it'll just turn it off. And it's pretty much just like isolating your batteries. And it's like a hundred bucks. Why would you not? Another cool thing about it is, in the next video, you will see a little something go wrong. Um, really, I didn't have to come at the back and isolate the batteries or anything, I could just open my phone and go whoop, DC circuit off on my phone. And that would allow me to do any maintenance work or fix anything on the DC circuit safely because there's no power going to it. I think that's pretty much it. Oh, yes, a water pump. We have a really, really high flow rate water pump just because of our filtration system that we have, because we have a or water fil filter as well as a sediment filter oh i forgot <laughs> um, <laughs> so the sediment filter the one that we have is a thirsty nomad well the whole system is thirsty nomad and the sediment filter is pretty pretty expensive and like they explain it is it's the ferrari of water filtration systems but because of that you need a high pressure and a high flow rate to go through that filter so we opted for a bigger water pump. Now for the water tanks, we have two of them. They're both Atlas tanks and they're flush mounted underneath the van. Um, so one, I think is a 50 liter tank for our gray and the other is a 120 liter tank for our fresh. And you might be wondering, well, why don't you have any guards on it? And that's because it is made from a food safe material that is at least one centimeter thick. That container is not gonna get destroyed by any rocks or anything. One thing that's special about the van as well is that we use the same flooring that we use when we renovated our house. So it's kind of like having a part of our house in the van. We have multiple different light circuits. So obviously one for the shower. Yes. But then also what is amazing about the van is that it has undercab lights. So when you're doing cooking or whatever, it's well lit and it's not a big shadow on your food or prep area. Underfloor lighting. I only really did this as an aesthetic thing <laughs> and to like make it like more balanced the lights. But uh, I recently learned from one of Max's videos um, that it actually doesn't like light up outside. Like you can't really see in when the undercab lights are on. So it's a extra benefit. Funny... <laughs> yeah extra benefit from it i guess we should say that with these lights they're all on separate yeah. circuits so and different switches as well initially i was going to use normal house light switches but then after doing research i noticed that those ones aren't as hardy or durable as the dc ones and over time can be d potentially dangerous um so just went with simple like um voting light switches like dc light switches 
But what's nice about them is they're actually kind of cute, and they have they're like cute little, looking. They have like little lights on, so you know when when, when the something's lights on. <laughs> yeah, and they're also waterproof. So yes, I mean, not that. Imagine getting that wet, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it's but really it's, cool. <laughs> it's great having them all on separate circuits because depending yeah. on what we're doing, we can have everything off apart from the kitchen lights if we're yeah. cooking something, or, or if we want to conserve electricity, then we can just turn them all off and leave this one on because this is yeah. the only one that's on a separate light circuit so there's one here one in the shower one for the under cabs obviously there's one <laughs> light under there as well <laughs> um that was a huge pain to do across both <laughs> uh under cap here main which goes to here as well and then at the back here, I didn't want to be one of those people that had to get out of bed to turn the lights off. So I put <laughs> one here. But we don't really use this one that often. Yeah, we it's really so only, often. We only use the skylight one, which I wasn't initially going to hook up. But Lydia was like, yeah, you might as well hook it up. The switch is there. The lights are there. Grateful that she did that because uh, they're super but, handy. It's, and the it's blue perfect. light is quite nice at it's night. It's easy on your eyes as well at night. So Yeah, like if we're laying in bed on our phone Indians. or like <laughs> on our laptops or whatever, then yeah. it's actually really nice having the blue light. Yeah, it is. Which I thought it was going to be horrible. But. Yeah, I thought it's like, <laughs> oh, yeah, disco, disco. But no, it's actually really nice. <laughs> I nearly forgot to say what material all the cabinets were made out of. It was all made out of marine plywood. Um, we found a supplier local to us and it was actually pretty like, pretty decently priced. So I thought it was probably be one of the best materials to use because it's durable, um, won't just degrade like a chipboard or MDF and it's a lot lighter in weight than a lot of the woods. So. Yeah. yeah. And like glitchy, I use it even for like the cabinet fronts. Um, so just use different thicknesses of uh, plywood and just cut the strips. And I guess that's one negative. It's a lot of, is lot of the, work. <laughs> these fronts are beautiful, but having this feature oh, collects dust. It collects so much dust. All the it's time. so annoying. But um, I mean, they're beautiful. They really add like something to the cabinets and make them look really nice, but they just get dusty. I really wanted to add like more definition to, to yeah. them man. like because you have a lot of like flat surfaces especially with so much white as well yeah so that's the only reason why I've, i did this but uh <laughs> i probably if i was to do it again i'd probably do it a little different <laughs> that is the full van tour i feel <laughs> like we've definitely missed something <laughs> i mean really a van build is so involved i would not oh, be surprised if we did <laughs> we definitely have if you have any questions, if you think we've missed anything, if you want to know more details on something, please just let us know in the comments and we will answer. We're also going to put together like <laughs> like a post on our website that just lists everything we used in detail. Yep. Um, and if you think we've missed anything there, just let us know and we'll add it. Thanks so much for watching guys and uh, we'll see you in the next one. In our next video, we it's our trial trip. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, you'll get to see us figuring out van life and the, the chaos of that. First time, yeah. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>